this structure, a version of this structure was sent to me by one of our moms. And she said, okay, here's what we did. We did, this is what we did. And then she said, where is the math? Like, what, what am I looking at? And totally get that. So what we want to do is just go through and notice everything that we can about this structure. And I wrote down here. So if you've done the Notice, Wonder, Discover workshop or the boot camp, these are the questions that we should be asking. So I wrote them down, but there's underneath these questions as we go through them, like the who, what questions, what are like, what am I looking at? What do I see? Um, if you're outside, the what questions, nouns, lots and lots of nouns is what you're going to be naming. Anything that you can touch or feel, um, that's what's going to be under your who, what. And then the when. Now, this one doesn't really, it's not going to apply here. But, you know, what do I do first? This one's really helpful Like if you're sitting down and your kids have trouble with, like, doing things system systematically. When should you do this? What should you do first? What would be the next thing you did? What did I do first? What did, you know, that what's next? What's last? What comes before? What comes after? What is it? Are we outside? Is it autumn? Is it summer? Um, is it morning, afternoon or night? You know, do we do we get up and put our do we take our pajamas off in the morning or take our pajamas off at night? You know, these are basic things we can be asking our kids, a sequence of events, you know, naming. See, you have kids that retell a story and they can't tell them uh, that they get the sequence of events mixed up. You should be practicing that because they're going to have trouble. Like lots of things are going to cause trouble. That tells you they have trouble with time um, or they have trouble with systems, one or the other. All right. Where? So where are things in relationship to other things? Where are we? Um, what kind? Which one? So this would be colors, shapes. Um, it would be, uh, let's see. Um, oh, in the where also would be like prepositions over, under, around, top, bottom. We say anywhere a cat can go. That's how we, that's how we do definitions. Wherever a cat can go, not a definition, a preposition. If there's a study that was done that kids who have trouble and don't have a clear understanding of prepositions cannot do algebra like that is a huge problem and they're gonna have major issues like if they have prepositional we wouldn't think that to be true but if we have prepositional so we see it, kids that will say uh hold on right <clears throat> well this is on this is the, the the green one is on the orange one it's not on it's above right? But mixing on and above. Now this one is both on and above, right? This one is below. This one comes after this one comes after this orange one. It's now before this orange one. Making sure your kids understand prepositions is huge. All right. Uh, how many, what can be counted? Lots and lots and lots mm -hmm. of stuff can be combined and counted. And uh, let's, so let's see, relationships. So for us, that we're going to be looking mostly at mathematical relationships, but we have personal relationships with our parents and our sisters and our brothers and grandparents. We have distance relationships near, far. We have quality relationships of more or less. Um, and then actions, which we probably aren't going to be doing, but there are actions in math. So we have... Um, Right now, we're not going to be doing, but the, doing them in this particular notice mm -hmm. and wonder. But there are actions because there's we have operations, and the operations perform an action on numbers. Um, and in geometry, we have rotations and turns, and you know, slides. There's all kinds of ways that we have actions in math. All right, but running and walking and dancing and you know. Driving, all of those things are actions. All right. So what we want to do is just notice when there's two ways that we can do this. We can just randomly go through and just pick out whatever you happen to see. And then we can go back and go through each of our questions and decide whether we did it thoroughly or not. And the advantage of doing it this way 
is that you see what it is that your kids are interested in and what mm-hmm. what are the things that stick out at them. All right. But we can also go through it systematically because if you have somebody who's just staring at the page and has no idea, they're just looking at you with this blank look on their face, then we can just start here and work our way through. So there's not a right or wrong way and there's not a right or wrong thing that we're going to notice. We're just going to go through now. We have this thing and let's notice. So do we want to go through systematically or do we want to just do whatever strikes our fancy? Somebody pick one. I would say systematically. I think it's harder. You just say what you notice? No, I think if you would do it like uh, one question after another, like in order, then it would be harder than just saying whatever comes to your mind. Okay. So you want to do it systematically or randomly? Systematically. Okay. So who or what are we looking at? Rods. Okay. What else? Anything else? We're looking at them in descending order from top to bottom. All right. So we have, we, we're looking, so we have order top to bottom. Uh, ro- rods organized in trains. Ah, we have, so we have so we have rods. We have trains. They're organized in descending order, top to bottom. The rods are of different lengths, and each length is of the same color. Okay, so rods are different, and the uh uh so and. Same lengths are the same color. Does that work? Yeah. Okay. They're all single color trains. It's very important to notice. So just a question, like when we work with rods, um, so when we say single color, like, you know, different length, is it already what kind of question? But I, I guess when we do rods, it's very hard not to mention it immediately. Is it right? So, so that's it. But she's saying these are. So she, we've got trains, and then we're saying what kind of train? So a single color train would be describing the what kind or which one. Okay. It gets hard if you start even to, so you start to see if you do them systematically, it gets a little bit tricky because, mm-hmm. you know, if you notice something like there's going to be descriptors that are added to it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it seems like what kind and what would often go together. Uh-huh. But we haven't, so we have their single color trains. Um, so that tells you what kind, and then we're going to have to go through and we can name each individual color um, when we get to the what kind, which one. Okay. Um, some of the trains are the same length and some of them are different lengths. So we have the same Is there anything else that you so can I you, see can you, call trains. Mat, can you call it a mat or the mat is it should be all different lengths to be a mat? So if it's a it's mat, the same length. they would all be the same length. Same length, okay. Yeah. So this would not be a mat. Is it pattern? So well, so a, a pattern, it could be a pattern, but a pattern is usually for a particular length. Also, oh, okay. So we would, so these are just trains, but like, so each one of these, when I built that orange, when I built the orange mat, we would, all the trains underneath are a pattern for the orange mat. Okay. And so I, those just, are just, just I just trains tend to call them side, trains. side by side. What? So those are just trains placed side by side. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, these trains are, so that would tell you where are they? So we have a bunch of trains. 
Um, and they're not just placed anywhere. So we have, where are they? Well, the trains are, I'm gonna put this down here. Trains are side by side. Is there anything else that we, like if we can look for a noun that you see? Now you wouldn't necessarily see this if the trains were in front of you. You would see it, but I'm not sure that you would call it this, but this is on a screen. And clearly on the screen, we can see these. Okay, what do we see? What do you notice about when the the cars, the rods meet up. We see little lines where they meet. Yeah, these lines, so we're looking, these lines are gonna be important. You see lines mm -hmm. where the cars meet. All right, so we have, so when, we don't ha have a little, yeah, there's not a lot of when. So let's look at where. So we have the trains are side by side, so we know where those are. And then let's look at where, as far as where these lines are. Where are the lines? So it's where the cars meet, but then what else do what, what else can we notice about where these lines are? Where the cars in one train meet at the same place the cars in another train meet. They make a larger like a taller line. <laughs> Okay, so let's let's do something so we can see that. All right, let's get, I need a color, hold on. Can I give me? You mean the pattern in lines? Like, look here. So she's saying, okay, right here, they meet. And then these two, Okay, come up. I want a line. Here we go. All right. And then like these meet here. And then these meet here. All right, so do you see what we're looking at? Does everybody see it? So here yeah, so we're sort of looking at where there's like equivalent rods, right? Yeah, so tell me more about equivalent rods. Well, like where one rod um, has a rod train of another color that's equivalent to it. All right, so the lines meet up where uh, two trains are, can I say the same length? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. All right. Um, so we could go through, so we have some wares. I'm gonna just leave that sit for a little bit. And then let's look at like what kind okay, can I add to can I add to where that all the trains are left aligned? Okay. Not, not yes. right, but left. All trains are left aligned. All right. All 
All right, so we have what, which, what kind and which one. And this would be colors, shapes. Um, we have eight orange rods in the orange train. So that would maybe be how many, what could be counted or how many. Okay. So we have orange. We didn't have that before. We have orange. What else do we have? Blue, we have all the colors. Blue, tan. Blue, tan. Black, black dark black, green. Uh, dark green. I'm going to just do these yellow, uh, pink, green, okay. red, and white. What? Yeah, I like. This helped you so much. Oh, Sorry. All right. So we have so we have all the colors. I don't know that we're going to get at least yet. We might have to come back to some of these. Uh, what, how many, and what can be counted? So I'm going to, let's just do this. I'm going to make, um, I'm sorry, they changed all my Zoom tools on me. I'm sorry about this, but I am can't find, I need a box and I don't, here we go. All right, and I'm going to make some lines. You need 10, one, two, so we got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and I'm going to do one down the center. And I'm going to go ahead and charts are really great ways of organizing information. All right, so we have orange, we have tan, we have black, dark green, yellow, pink. I could have just put a D. All right, uh, yeah, yellow. Did you skip blue on purpose? I did. Nope. I'm going to put, uh, <laughs> there's nowhere to put it. I'm going to put blue up here. Blue, purple, green, red, white. Here, and let's do this. Of course it would do that. Control Z. All right. Let's Erase. There we go. All right. We're going to do blue and orange. All right. So let's write down how many of each we have. Eight oranges. All right. 80 white. 80 white. Mm -hmm. Did you read that train for me? <laughs> just kidding <laughs> totally kidding <laughs> no uh, 40 red okay 40 red 20 purple 20 or, purple sorry I meant 40, 40 yellow not red sorry 40 yellow yeah sorry no it's not 40 yellow no, no, it is 40 red. <laughs> it is 40 red. Okay, I'm going to just write, and then you guys can ha hash it out, and I'll put... So do we want to write 40 on red or 40 on yellow? 40 on red. Uh, red, Okay. Yeah. Red is red. <laughs> okay. I don't know if it's going to let me erase this, and that was on dark... It was on green anyway, so I had it wrong. All right, 40 on... So we've got 80, 40, 20. So that's interesting. All right. Uh, 16 yellow. There's eight blue. We have eight blue. Uh, 
How many tan? Those are hard. One, ten. two, ten. ten. Black. Eleven. And dark green. Thirteen. Thirteen. Thirteen and green. Light green. <laughs> Twenty-six. All right. Now we might be able to find some patterns, but because they're not a mat, not all the patterns are going to be consistent because we don't have a mat. But there is some things that we can notice, particularly for rods that all end up in the same place. Yeah, so if you notice that two whites uh pattern for red so we notice now and we can look and check because we can go right here and we can see that for every red there's how many whites right here so we can look we can see look every red where there's a line there's two whites every red there's two whites and you can do it for every color and you can do what and we can do it for every color like how many whites in every yes so, so are there, are there places where there's, so I notice here we have red and then I notice here we have white and green, but then I notice here we have white, red, and pink. And then here we just have white and yellow, but then we have white, red, and green and dark green. And then we have white and black. And then we have one, two, three, four. Here we have two goes up, but then we have one, two, three, four. We have one, two, three, four, five. So some of these meet in a lot of places. What is, so if we can count things, what is the most number, like where can we find that they meet up the most? where there's the most rods meeting up at the same time. So we have down here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Can we find anywhere where there's more than six? There's, um... So right here, I'm going to put a six. Where, go two rods back. Right here? Yeah. And there's how many? One, two, three, four, five. One, seven. two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we got seven here. Is that would be the biggest? We got one, two, three, four, five, six again. And there's six. One, one. two, three, yeah. four, five, six again. And then one, two, three, four. Five. One, two, three, four. Are there any other sixes? Do we have them all? Mm -hmm. Another four. six, but it doesn't align with an orange. It's um to the right. Oh gosh, how do I describe where that is? It's on tan. One, two, three, four, five, six, six tans. One, two, three, four, five, six. So right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So right here, there's a six. And there's also six on the left of the middle six. So we have the middle six we have right here. Where's my mouse? All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. So here there's six. And there's another six, three tens in. So one, two, three, right here. Or before that, one, two, before three, that. four. That's five. The ten. One. Oh, ten. So one, two, three. This way, right here. No, ten. 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 One, <laughs> two. So one, two, three. Here. Yeah. yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So that's interesting. So we have one here and one here that are not on. And then this one is also not on orange. Are there others that are not 
So this is one. So it seems like Yes, yeah, there is six. There um, should be like, it seems like there's one more. I feel like maybe there should be two more. Two, yeah. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe not. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. And the next one is six. Here is six. Mm -hmm. Oh, because you know you don't you don't see that because the oh. flu is missing. One, two, three, four, five. Then six. it's seven. Then seven. It's seven. That's another seven. Do we have another? So one, two, three. Nope. One, two, three, four. Nope. We have a six here. One, two, three, four, five. I'm not seeing another six. Does anyone else see one? One, two, three, four, five. That's a five. So isn't that curious? Now I see something, I noticed something. Uh, let's look and let me get my hair. I noticed that here, there's a difference of one. Here between this blue and this orange, there's two. Between this one and this one, this blue and this orange, there's three. Between this one and this one, there's a difference of four. This one and this one, there's a difference of five. And then six. And then seven. And I'm betting that one's eight. It is. And if we go down to this one, we have a one. You do it here. Let's go down here and look at it here because we can see it better. Two, three, four, uh, Get up there, five, and then it's same. And then we start over again. One, two, three, four, and this one will be five, and then it will start over again. Now we may or may not know, I know why that works, but we may or may not know why any of that works. We're just, at this point, we're just looking to notice patterns and what we see. So what would happen if we did it? Does that always work? Is it always, so this is what I wanna know. If I were with my kids, I would say, hey, you notice that up here, does that work for down here what happens? So let's notice on the six, the one when we did the six, the difference between or the, the difference between the black and the green, this was one, it went up, we did one, two, three, four, five, and then it started over again. So let's see what happens when we do green and the difference between green and pink. We have one, two, and then it's same. And then we have one and then two and then it's the same and then we have one and then we have two and then it's same huh huh isn't that interesting 
So if you were a betting person, what would you do? What do you think would be the difference? What does this pink and yellow go to? So if green goes, white, red, white, red. So white, red, same, white, red, same, white, red, same. What do you think that pink and yellow will be? White, red, light, green, same. White, red, light, green, same. Because we had this one up here was all the colors up to blue and then same. And this one, it's white, same, white, same, white, same, white, same. So it's just white. And you could just see that right here. And so it's it's okay like with a child to leave it like here because I'm starting to have anxiety because I don't know the answer. I notice it, but I don't know the answer. And it's okay that you don't know the answer. It's about Yeah, just so I if you want to know the answer, so if your child is really interested in wanting to know the answer and you don't know the answer, just send me an email and I'll I'll help you figure it out. All okay. right, because here's what we have. So you have this, what you see is there's clearly something going on and we want to leave it to some degree here's why we want it because this leaves you with the idea like holy cow there's a lot going on here and this is interesting and it's getting your interest right you don't have to panic this is like this is like real math stuff this is interesting versus sitting down and just filling out worksheets right like who would rather do this uh, even if I don't have the answers, I would much rather do this all day. And we have just barely, barely scratched the surface on what's here. Barely. Like this, there's so much happening in this particular structure that we could we could be looking at this for two or three days and just noticing all kinds of stuff. All right. So. Um, if so, if your child gets really interested in something and like keeps pressing you, you don't know where you're going to go, like you don't know what to do with it, just send me an email and I'll like answer you and give you your answers. But what's really good is you like as you go along and you get you see what's happening and you don't have the language for it. Right. But then when the language comes to you, it'll eventually come in the class. You can go, oh, that's what that is. That's that's what we're doing. So one of the things I talk about a lot is I was, we were doing, we were building staircases and we have staircases that count plus one, it's a regular standard. Here we go. This is a staircase and we're gonna rotate this staircase that counts plus one. And that means that there's the difference between each step is one. So we can count staircases that count plus two, staircases that count plus three. So the difference between each step is three. And there's all kinds of great information that you can do by playing with staircases that count, but we can also do staircases that count times two. So we have one and then we have two, and then we would double this one and this would be four. And then the next one we can double and this would be eight. And then the next one would be double, we rotated, that will be 16. When I saw this, this is the first time I saw this, and I was like, oh, and you, if you don't know, that's okay if you don't know, but these are logarithms. That's what that is. And it was the first time I actually could see a logarithm. And so I didn't have, you know, I've been looking, it's in reverse. You study logarithms, I had no clue what they were. I didn't really understand what was happening. And then I see this, and I was like, oh, those are logarithms. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> So you don't have like, like when it hits you and then you have the language to describe the thing that you see, right? Then like the light bulb goes on and they're not going to forget it. Like, so you, but it is interesting, you know, like what we want to do is we look at all of this stuff and we look for the patterns. And then as the course goes on, we give you, we give the students the language to talk about the things that they see. And if they're really excited about it, we want to give the language right away. Like, you know, if they're really looking at something and then you don't have to follow the course. You can just follow your child. If they see something and they're really excited about it, I'll tell you where to go in the course to, so you can work on those things. Um, 
So but, when you notice with a child, do we um like you know I can notice more things that they can, and let's say, let's say we 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 do we take we take turns in noticing. So yes. are we trying to stay on their level because you know, or like are we trying to push them through my noticing? Like I can notice something, you know, just to kind of motivate them to notice well, it. I, or would, would it be Robin their discovery? Well, you can, but here's here's what happens. If you do, like ideally, you would do this in a group. That would be ideal. Um, because what happens is you see when you get in a group of other kids, you see how they're thinking, right? And so that's why we, as the kids get older, we do the group math classes. It's like as they get into algebra, it's important because what happens, you have kids who won't talk and they... Um, and they're limited in the things that they see. And then what happens, you get in a group of 10 kids and you start to see how everybody sees differently and thinks differently. And then you're exposed to new ways of thinking. And so ideally you would be sitting down with your kids and you would be taking turns noticing, but you shouldn't push it. Like he does one, you do one. He does, you know, your child does one, you do one. If you have all the kids sitting, because like these kinds of things, everybody in the family, mom, dad, everybody who's there can get in on this. Um, and just because all you're doing is like looking at stuff and seeing what's there and the more language they have the more that well here's how about this the more that you notice the more you notice like if it if it didn't occur to you to count like when i say like oh, this is all like what can we count well we can count the difference between these rods and see what happens but you probably didn't think about doing that before right we can count like where they line up we can count how many lines match you know, right here we get there's so much sitting here that we can count uh, but if you don't, you know, if, if one person doesn't do it first, you just, it doesn't occur to you. So you don't want to shove him full of stuff. Like you don't want to do 10 things you notice for everyone that he just do one to one and leave it sit and come back. Mm -hmm. All right. What time is it? All right. So. <coughs> What's happening here? So like what's going on? So just so you know, what's happening here when we do this and why is that going? Does anybody have a guess before I say? Because mm -hmm. as soon as I say it, you're gonna go, oh yeah. Well you're you have a difference of one and then you're you're doubling. So you're you're doubling orange and you're doubling blue. So then the difference gets doubled as well. And then when you have three and then three blue, the difference is tripled as well. All right. So so let's think you about that. Yep. So for every, you could write it as every you one nine. So let's say, like let's just give these number names. For every blue uh and white or blue and orange comparison, there's a difference of one. So every so for every nine, so every time you count nine. There's it and 10, right? There's it's one away from 10. So if you have two nines, it's going to be two away from 20. If you have three nines, it'll be three away from 30. So if you discover this on your own, this makes memorizing the nines times table super easy because what is five times nine is 10 times nine minus five. Seven times nine is uh 10 or seven times nine. Okay, nine times five is 10 times five minus five. There we go. So just get this right. Let's write it down because I I'm menopausal and I will tell you the wrong thing without meaning to. So I have to write it so I can see what I'm saying. All right. So nine times five is the same as 10 times five minus five. So we, we said we counted 10 fives instead of nine fives. So you have one extra five, we get rid of one. All right, so nine times 10 is the same as 10 times 10 minus 10. But notice that's the same thing that happens here. So we don't have to, you always think about this that you can do it with tens, 
but we can do it with any one of these. If we don't know one, we, if we don't know one, then we can go to another one and just subtract. So let's write the one. So this is where we can go with this. Let's do this one. So let's say, let's write an equivalent problem. So we have what is, here we go. I'm going to erase this. Where's my eraser? Here we go. All right. So let's do, uh, uh, four times four is the same as what? Same as five times four minus four. All right, let's do, uh, let's do six times eight is the same as what? You could do it the, like I find five's easy. So could I, I could do five times eight plus eight. The same way, same way. If it works, so that would be the question you would say, Hey mom, so my mom, so if your kid said that to you, say, I don't like those, but I'd rather work in fives. Does it work with fives? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Does it work? Is it, you may know that it works with five, right? But just, I don't know. Let's just get the rods out and check, right? And then what could you do? What could you say about that? Like, can we generalize it after we look at it? So we can do five times eight plus eight. So there's your application and what's happening. And these are all, if you divided, right? These are your remainders. So this is nine goes into 10 once. And if you have three going in, there's gonna be a remainder of three. And here it's gonna be a remainder of four. And then we get all the way up to a remainder of eight. And then once you have a remainder of eight, nine goes into 10 evenly after on the ninth one. So nine times 10. <clears throat> so two goes in, so there's two goes into three at, twice. Well, for every, so there's three twos for every two threes. So once you hit, so there's two of them and then it's, then it goes in evenly. So we have remainder and remainder uh, we have a remainder after the first one, a remainder after the second one, but the third two goes into two threes evenly. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can explore doing this. All right. So can you, if you sit down and just, so when I said, like somebody said, well, my kids don't like doing noticing. If we just build a structure, any structure, right? Like we can build, they can build staircases and combine them or just put up a bunch of rods and then measure with single color rods. We can take some of these and change them, right? Like we could, we could take these and make them two colors and make a pattern so that it's, you know, we could do, uh, let's see, black, black, light green, or not black, right? yellow, light green, yellow, light green, yellow, light green, and then look for new patterns, like what happens, what emerges. And all we want to do is to get them noticing and get you noticing and then get them talking to you instead of, and if you have nothing, if we don't have like where there's any particular answer, they're not looking for an answer. You're not like, we're just like, what do you see? It removes a lot of pressure off of you and off of them. All right, any questions? I have a question, not about this structure. My kids like to build 3D structures uh -huh. and that's probably a whole other topic, but I am kind of lost on where to go. Like we did a structure similar to this one, not with all the colors. 
And there was so much that we noticed. And then they build these like buildings and I'm like, I don't even know where to go with this. <laughs> well, okay. So they're harder. They're a little bit harder. I'm going to erase all of this. So let's do, um, so like, c- can you describe one that they built? Yeah, they'll do a lot of things that are like log cabin style. So they might do red rods on two sides and that are parallel and then um, blue rods on the other two sides in between the reds. And then they would alternate. So then they would do reds on top of the blue that would cross on top of the ends of the arm, sorry, oranges on top of the blue. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Blues in between and make these like towers. Yes. So. So one of the things that's going on is that they're playing with symmetry as as they're building up. And so one of the things that you can notice, and it doesn't even have to be about numbers, but you can notice about buildings that fall down versus buildings that don't fall down, right? Can you make a building that can, so this is just for you guys, can you make a building or what would it take? Because they're building them already. What would it take to build a building that is how many stories or however many rods tall? How do you guys have a lot of rods? We have a lot, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, can you make one this tall, right? Can you make one this tall? Keep going. How big can they get, right? That's the question. How, like, and they're going to have to do things structurally to make them stay up. And all of that is still problem solving and noticing and wondering. Um, can they build them that are two rooms, right? Can you build a, can you build one that is the length of an orange without using orange? So can you build one that's a side, that's the length. So the side is the length of an orange, but you can't use orange. So for those, you can start putting constraints on them and then just see what they can come up with. Cause it gets harder. Um, I mean, more, those are more like structurally, like what can you do? What can't you do? Yeah. I'm, I've been looking at it wondering, like, there's probably math that's beyond what I can see <laughs> on some of those. Well, there is, but it's not. It has more to do with, like, geometry and how okay. things are structural and how they stand up at first and fall down. And all of those things are good, too. Right. Like, what's the load that something can handle? And then what do you need to do to keep the keep the floors from caving in? And then half the fun is having them cave in and having to do it over again. You know, that's like, that's the part that makes parents crazy because the rods are all over the floor, but that's what makes it fun for them to keep going back and doing it is having it fall down and start over again. Okay. Awesome. So we'll go a little bit less like looking for patterns and numbers and a little bit more about just the structure. Yeah. Like what can you do? Yeah. Like, and giving them a challenge, like, can you build one that is, has, how high can you build it if it has three rooms? You know what I mean? What happens if the rooms... Like, that's the, like, what happens if, that's a great question to ask. Like, what happens if the rooms are, can we go, all right, where's my, all right. what happens if the rooms, can we build it so it's three rooms this way, or three rooms this way? Mm-hmm. Can we build it, can this side be 10? but you can't use 10. You, know, you have to use different sizes for the, you know, so this whole length is 10, but you have to use some other way of dividing the room. So, and then what stays, what doesn't stay? Like, can we do, can we do a red by uh tan room? That's the length of orange. Like, what do you need to do? What about, what about a white by a blue room? Like, which ones work? Which ones? This is not going to work. And Well, first of all, it doesn't become a room, right? It's a one. But this is a really important thing to notice, right? Like that this is one and this length and it doesn't form another thing. Like where a, a two by a two by 10, right? Like you actually can get a room there. But a one by is just the wall. That's all it is. Right. So that's an important thing to discover, because when you start building, if we build out and we do algebra, right, that whole length of one, this right here. All right. Hold on.
I'm sorry. I have to, this is the new, this is not working for me. All right. That's a straight line. You guys know <laughs> yes. that's a straight line, right? All right. So this is a one by 10, right? And so the area here is what? 10. The area is 10. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That whole area is just 10. And like that whole kids want to do something with that. Right. Because this. Right. Is 20. If this is two and this is 10. Right. But this this can be a problem. Like so. So getting them to play it. Right. And then understanding that this isn't it doesn't it's just a wall when they're building their house. Like they can start to wrap their heads around like how this works. Yeah. Okay. So kind of the spatial stuff. Yes. Yes. And kids who, right. Kids who, if you look at the studies, kids who do a lot of spatial, who, who, who are good at spatial manipulations, it's almost impossible to be good at math without having spatial reasoning. <laughs> But it's also like solving problems in general. So I like to take this out of the realm of just math, the noticing and wonder out of just the whole idea of math. So I think about math very differently than I used to, which for me is this is until you lay a solid foundation of cognitive skills, of mature cognitive skills, the math really doesn't matter, right? The content is a non-issue. So the, the, the math reveals weak thinking. And so, or sloppy thinking, math is exceedingly good at that. And so we have people who want you to like answer quickly. Well, I don't care if my kids answer quickly, but I, I do want them to have solid reasoning. And then once you can reason well, like all kinds of doors open up in math as far as beauty goes. But if you can't see the patterns, if you don't know how to like count different kinds of things, if you don't understand spatial reasoning, all these doors, everything has to be spoon fed to you because you can't see it, right? So I'm we're using math to build cognitive skills. Everything that I do as far as homeschooling now is lays a solid foundation for mature cognitive skills. And then the content, like whether or not they've mastered particular content can come after we lay a good foundation of mature cognitive skills. And so that spatial reasoning is, it, that's way more important than whether or not they have numbers down. Like the, the, the number thing is going to affect a small area of their life while spatial reasoning affects every single area of their life. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Is there again, at least, through, is I'm there just telling you, like it makes people nervous, but I have, I have a, my 13 year old is, he has, well, Tourette's ADHD. He's got, um, uh, he's a little bit obsessive compulsive and he's clearly on the autism spectrum. I mean, he's not bad. He's high functioning autistic, but he's like, like, there's just things like our spatial reasoning when he was little was like, it, like he couldn't figure it out. So he was running into old ladies at the grocery store. Like he just, and he would be running and then he would, he would just hit you, just ram into you because he couldn't judge space. And people didn't like being around him because he couldn't figure out like where he was in space. So this has been a huge, you know, so training all of this stuff, like it, it, it doesn't just help them in math. It helps them everywhere. So we spent a lot of time, we spent a lot of time working on cognitive skills and he did his um, evaluation in IXL this year. And so we quit after they were only giving him algebra two and trigonometry questions. And we have played, I mean, when I say played, I mean, literally we, we play a lot of games, play a lot of prime climb in our house. We have been playing at math and algebra for three years and algebra one, we have not finished an algebra one course. We've just been playing around and he, his ability to actually score. So like we've been doing algebra since fourth grade, 
Um, but playing literally just like, like we might go three weeks and not do math. So I do really mean playing and he's doing just fine scoring really, really well without all of the pressure, because we do, we really took the time to do as Gatenio says, it's like the awareness, like only awareness can be educated. So if you're unaware that you can count things. If you're unaware how the spaces work together, if you're unaware how to to do all, like it doesn't matter. You're going to have trouble, right? You can have somebody can shove facts in your mouth. You can push them down your kids' throats all you want, but if they can't use that information, it's meaningless to them. It's absolutely meaningless. So. It does work. You can do all of elementary math. Even if you spend a lot of time doing cognitive skills in the beginning, you can be completely starting in kindergarten, be done with all of elementary math by the end of fourth grade. Play. Is, there, is there a list of these cognitive skills? I, I, like you mentioned propositions and... So things. if you go to um, the Facebook page, it's listed there. But also if you go to the replay page, so it'll say past, past, uh, workshops. The whole Notice Wonder Discover workshop is there. It's the same thing. And then also there is a, it's also in, if you go to the members, like the members section of the website, which everybody has access to, like everybody who's on my email list has access to that, not just you. The Notice Wonder Discover workshop is there as well. Mm -hmm. So let's go to and I go through on the notice part, uh, let's see, dashboard, let's go to my dashboard. Oh, yes, I, I remember you're talking about space. Oh yeah, so if you just click on workshop replays and then you go here, because we've changed this around. Um, let's erase all of this. Okay, hold on. Let me get rid of that. Um, all right. We can clear. I don't know how to do this anymore. I can't clear this. I'm sorry. I don't. All right. I'm. I can erase. Here we go. All right. This is old workshops. Let's scroll down the page. And it should be. There you go. The Notice Wonder Discover Bootcamp. This is um, an excellent article. And then I notice here that we don't have, there's a worksheet. I will upload that today. There's a Notice Wonder Discover. Um, it's a, it's not really a worksheet, but it has the questions. And then it has like questions like underneath who, what, there's questions that you can ask and under when, and then under where the list of prepositions. But in the, uh, this one right here, the first, the first work, the first workshop that I did on awareness is the things that we do as parents that are really don't work for your kids as far as like helping them learn. These are the things that we do to get in the way of their learning. And then this notice one goes up to um, like the how many. And then right here is like the question. So this one is about relationships and um, actions, that kind of thing. And then both of them say, okay, here's the cognitive skills that fit under this part. And so here's this cognitive skill. This is what it looks like if you have mature cognitive skills. And then this is what it looks like when you have immature cognitive skills. And if you look at it, um, it is my, I'm going to say this and people are going, because I have a kid, I have a kid. So I feel like I can say this because I have a kid, I have one of those kids. Um, I don't really buy into the like dyscalculia and dysgraphia and all. I feel like what we have are kids who have untrained cognitive skills. I feel like mo there might be some kids who really do have an issue, but for the most part, um, even with like being on the spectrum, my son, these are mostly overcome by training and working in the cog, like working on specific cognitive skills. So 
these two are, these two have to deal with like the spe specific deficiencies and cognitive skills. And then when we come down here, this is about generalizing <clears throat> and how do you take information and then all the information that we've learned about and then organizing it and putting it in a way that other people can understand it. Or um, like if you were, if you have notes, if you want to be able to take information that you've learned and then put it into like some kind of way that you can understand it later, that's what this last one is about. Um, this one is a is really mature cognitive skill. And like that's, um, we do some of it when we start doing notation, that's the discover part, like, like you write it down. Um, but to fully really get there, you're talking about 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. Um, before we can, you know, there's just things that it, it takes time. Kids have to mature in a certain way before you're really, you know, so you might have really bright kids who can do this early, but this one is mostly a later thing. But these two are a right now thing, but you can't, you do the notice first. That's what we're going to spend like the first half of course one doing is noticing. And then if you don't have a lot that you notice, there's nothing to wonder about, right? Like you have to have this, you know, these are these things, these phenomena that I'm looking at when I look at a structure, this is the thing I see happening. You know, if you haven't seen those, then you can't wonder about them. You know, I like, if you look at the, I'm building a multiplication course right now. And one of the things are all the patterns that show up in the multiplication table. It's shocking, like how much stuff is sitting in the, but you've never noticed it and you can't wonder about why they're there. It's not even exciting to you if you haven't seen it, if you don't even know how to look at it. So if you don't have the skills to look and notice, like you're never gonna wonder. So like you have to like develop the skills of noticing first. All right. I'm done. I'm off my high horse or my, my soapbox, right? Anybody have questions before we go? Other ones? No, I'm sorry. I have phones ringing and dogs barking. All right. No questions? We're done? Going once? Going twice? All right. Well, if you have any questions, if you notice something and your kids obsess about it and you don't know what it is or where to go with it, do not hesitate to send me a text message in Facebook. I tend to get those right away. Um, or send me an email and I will get back to you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye.